Hey guys, Alex and Dad from 7th Hour Films, back again with Doctor Who Classic. Last time around, we finished up Trial of a Time Lord with the last two parts of The Ultimate Foe. What happened on that one? Well, as it turns out, we were both correct and incorrect. The uh, Valyard turned out not to be the Master, although the Master was involved in essentially trying to save the Doctor. The Valyard apparently was some future iteration of the Doctor whose all of his bad instincts were kind of distilled into the Valyard and he was there to try to make sure that the good instincts were all wiped out so that he could survive and take all the Doctor's remaining regenerations. Yes. It was a little odd. It was a little convoluted. But at the same time, it was interesting. Yeah. And uh, and they played it very well. And, um, yeah, the the Doctor and the Valyard fought within the Matrix until eventually the Doctor... Uh, destroyed the machine that the Valyard was going to use to destroy all the Time Lords within the court, and uh, Gallifrey was still apparently in disarray, though. And, um... Yeah, and then at the end, uh, they left with uh, the Inquisitor looking to run for Lord President of yeah. Gallifrey. Yeah. So... And again, really enjoyed the performance of that actress. I thought she was very good. Yeah. So, uh, that, uh... And we still have no explanation of where Mill came from. Right. And I don't think... I, I think we're just not going to get the explanation. <laughs> so... But we did learn that Perry stayed behind with Irkanos and now is like the warrior queen or something like that. Yes. <sighs> Makes no sense. It, yeah, it just... <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's kind of weird, too, because, like... Obviously, what they were going with was the Valyard lied and tampered with the Matrix about the Time Lords using Yurkanos to kill uh, Sill's uh, boss who had taken over Perry's body. I guess I'm not entirely sure the purpose of that that the Valyard did. I, I guess it was just to mess with the Doctor because yeah. he knew how the Doctor would feel about that. He technically is the Doctor, so... Yeah. Anywho, um, none of that has anything to do with today, uh, because uh, the new new headlines in the British papers, Colin Baker sacked, and uh, now we've got a new guy. The the last of the new guys, technically. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, we are... Uh, slightly unexpectedly starting the the final era of classic Doctor Who. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we have any other, like, lead-in to it. Um, other than normally we do this on Saturday mornings, but because of various complications from yesterday, we're doing it today. Today happens to be the 17th of March. So, happy St. Patrick's Day to all of our followers over in the Emerald Isle. And... If you think I'm not wearing a green shirt, I will have you know that Grogu is on this shirt, and that counts as green. Look, I like to wear black on camera, okay? So, I I was wearing just a green shirt, but then I was like, well, if we're going to record, i got to wear black. So, um, Also, I'm pretty sure I've lost half my hair since the last video. Um, it, we, we Obviously, we both got haircuts. We probably look very different. Um, in, you know, two episodes time, this will grow longer and it'll be, it'll be better. So to all of you out there who, uh, care about my hair, I get a lot of, <laughs> every so often I get a comment where someone's like, dude, you need to go get a haircut. And I'm like, a haircut to what? You can already see it's, it's leaving one way or another. So I don't know. At some point I'm just going to pick a date and then just get rid of it all. And Ooh. that'll just be that. So... I'll, I'll, I'll shave off the sides and I'll just, like, have the full Walter White going on. I don't think I can do that, though. I think I need to keep this beard at all costs. So I'll just start wearing hats. Hey, some, I think I mentioned that someone questioned me about my beard the other day because they've only known me with a beard. And the last time I shaved this one off was in November of 2007 when I was doing the Centennial uh, for uh, Oklahoma. It was the 100th anniversary of our becoming a state. And I uh, was portraying Teddy Roosevelt, who was president at the time Oklahoma became a state. I've never shaved my beard off. <laughs> it has remained this way for nearly 10 years now, because uh, it was 2014 when I 
grew this out and I've just never shaved it off and I don't really plan to. I mm. shave the neck. I let, I've let that grow out a little bit and I need to deal with that. But anywho, uh, no one is here for the uh, the grooming and haircuts <laughs> of, of two gentlemen. So what you're here for is Doctor Who. Oh, oh, might as well. It is the first episode of the season, so if you want to watch the full unedited, unedited reaction... Uh, you can. It's available for free. Just head down in the description or into the pinned comment. We're watching this on Amazon BritBox. There are other ways. Normal BritBox comes to mind that you can watch this. It's also on the BBC iPlayer. So you can watch it, have a good time, hopefully. And when you're done with that, you can come back here for the discussion. So, is there anything else? I got nothing. Then let's just jump right into this episode of Doctor Who Classic. Here we go. <laughs> New opening? Oh god, there's a cold opening, I think. No theme. No. Well, it landed perfectly, at least. It's... It's a Wookiee. Meh. Oh! Wow. What a great transition that was. Oh, it's too slow. Too slow. Meh. It's okay. They'll go to verse 2 to make up for it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Get the new logo. Oh, Pip and Jane Baker back again. At least they crossed his legs. <laughs> Check both hearts. Yeah. That was a nice nap. Now, down to business. I'm a bit worried about the temporal flicker in Sector 13. There's a Bicentian a refit of the TARDIS to book in. Where am I? Who am I? And who are you? The Rani! Stay back! This is idiotic! <laughs> Next time, open the umbrella. Her shoulders are poofier than I remember. <laughs> That's a very 80s style. Mm. Oh. Wow, she exploded and was captured in a ball. Uh, and then she exploded. Jeez. Who are you? Mel. Melanie. Well, that's just wrong. Are you all right, Doctor? And you? Me? Yes, of course. Why not? Why not, indeed? We both are. Hmm? Oh. Oh. The bull in a barber shop. A navigational... The bull in a china shop. Me. <laughs> Doctor, are you sure you're well? Of course. Fit as a trombone. Fiddle. Hmm? <laughs> Fit as a fiddle. Oh, yeah. Ah, who's that? Me! I'm standing next to you. That's you, Doctor. Me! No wonder I've lost my memory. No, uh, it seems pretty far gone. Need a genius to unravel it. But you're a genius! Oh yes, I definitely remember that. Especially <laughs> in thermodynamics. It's a bit much for a trap, honestly. Spoons! <laughs> it runs like a chicken. Meh. They're like one step away from doing the old Marido run. I don't know what creatures are down here, but I feel like you need a switch on the outside to do that. <laughs> well, then find her, you incompetent fool! Are you coming now? Yes, Doctor, coming. <laughs> so he's Chewbacca with bat wings. 
Yeah. Too bad, guy. One thing about the doctor, you can't miss him in that outfit. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> That's my natural humility. Yeah. Mais non. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. You're a little short for that one. Yeah, that yeah. could work. Very Edwardian. How's that? Is that yeah. Mid Nova? Ah, yes, oh, there you yes. go. Just ditch the fur. There. Very elegant. Ow. Where do you reckon I keep it? Tool room. What be jiffy? Absence makes the nose grow longer. <laughs> <laughs> That is a problem there. Alrighty. That is part one. Alright, well. I like the fact that even though he's been injected with something that's giving him partial amnesia... He's he's eminently more more likable than the sixth doctor already. Yeah. Uh, uh, Pip and and whatever their name, the two uh, authors, have obviously put a lot of humor into this. Um, and of course, the Ronnie is not as good yet as she was the last time we saw her. But it's an interesting twist that she has essentially taken over Mel's job. Because the doctor can't remember who Mel was, but now that he sees the Ronnie as Mel, then he would see Mel as the Ronnie. So, I mean, it's it's clever writing. Don't know where it's going yet, but yeah. mean, is this the same planet that she had mentioned when we were back in the Industrial Revolution? Because she was talking about how she was trying to run a planet that was essentially populated by people who were idiots uh i don't think so because i think she actually cared about that planet so i think she genuinely ruled over that planet and she was like trying to help them because like she took away their ability to sleep and she needed to steal that from humans so that her people would okay. know peace again i don't i don't think this is it so i don't i don't know where you know what her plan would be here but um but yeah but other than that it's is good it's uh for for having to just you know have sylvester mccoy just sort of face down turn him over while he's in a wig and oh there there he is the new doctor he regenerated <laughs> um it is working out fairly well yeah so now we only saw Sylvester McCoy in Remembrance of the Daleks when we did the tour? Yes. And then in the movie? Yeah. All right. He looks significantly younger than I remember him. Now, I realize yeah. that when this was over, it was like, what, 88, 89? Yeah. And the movie wasn't until 96, but he aged quite a bit, apparently, in that seven or eight years. Yeah, so... Um, it's also interesting that now, because we've already seen the movie... Uh, both times uh, the Seventh Doctor regenerates, uh, he's just completely out cold, and there's no, like, th there's no, like, big thing, or there's, no. I mean, honestly, there's no story, because he regenerated at the beginning of this episode, and he was just knocked out cold, and he regenerates at the beginning of the movie as well, so it's uh, not a not a very dignified entrance or exit for the Seventh Doctor, but... But that was just kind of how it how it happened with with this one. Alrighty, part two. He's got a bit of Hartnell and a bit of Tom Baker in him, in that he's you know grumpy and old, older probably. Although you know 
he looks older, he might not have been older than Tom Baker. But he's got that kind of brash confidence. Yeah. Okay, I don't hate it as much as last season. It's very slow and plodding. Well. Again, why do you have to go so far down to pull a chain that's right there? I'm gonna assume it's chocolate. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking it's probably fresh meat in a liquid state. Mm. Now the doctor said the skeleton looked reptilian. We're going off the theory that dinosaurs once had feathers. Mm. It's got a segmented tongue. He's done a lot of screaming in these last two episodes. Yeah. For it. Kick it or something. I must have forgotten. But you may all forget. <laughs> a kangaroo never forgets. Elephants. <laughs> He's got an eye on the back of his head. Who are you? You. Which mouth? Where's the doctor? What have you done with us? Stay away from me. What have you done with the doctor? Oh, good, now, good job. The truth? What have you done with him? You've grown. He's here. Where? Under the carpet. Me, you watch a woman, me. You're nothing like him. If the doctor's been harmed, that. Help! 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 I knew you weren't finished, Ronnie. I told Mel as much. You told me? No, Mel. I am Mel. Who's the Ronnie? Try looking in the mirror in the face of evil. I've had enough of this drivel. All right. Compromise. Let me feel your pulse. Don't touch me. Ah, the proof of the pumpkins in the squeezing. You don't have to talk about the doctor, you miserable. You're the Rani I'm dicing with destruction. Can you find Mel? Mel, the worst she'll do is give me carrot juice. Carrot juice? What made me think of that? Well, perhaps the real doctor told you. It was his favourite drink. Favourite? I hate it. Yeah. Ah, got you out, haven't I? Nine, five, three. Who would have thought she would have been so obvious? <laughs> What's my age? <laughs> the Rani. Well, it's amazing for two beings who travel through all of time and appear at various points. They're the exact same age. In between the music and the hair, this really is the 80s now. <laughs> Mel. Hold it steady. I've got to maneuver it into position. Quite adept at maneuvering, aren't you, Doctor? Yes. Well, there's a Will, there's a Tom, Dick, and a Harriet. <laughs> if your usefulness is not yet over, you have another role to play. <laughs> Good job. So they are bats? I guess, yeah. They're man bats. You know me, I have great admiration for character actors from Great Britain. And well, they all look and sound familiar, but I, I can't place any of their names. Well, you know, it's not like the fastest pace or anything like that, but, you know, after watching The Twin Dilemma and having <laughs> that be so recently, you know, that was just at the top of the year that we watched that one. I, I can't really find faults in this, other than it's, just, it's, it's a little slow, but other than that, it's, it's perfectly fine. This new one, Incarnation, is good. He needs to get his memory back. I do see... I do see you're right about the... Kind of going back to that Tom Baker-ish, like... Like, 
I don't know, sort of the... I don't know how to describe what Tom Baker did. I don't know if Tom <laughs> Baker could... I don't know if you can describe it any other way than it was just Tom Baker. Yeah. But it is sort of that with a bit of a kind of Hartnell, maybe Pertwee. Like, he, he, he knows what he's doing. He's, he's slightly more serious, you know? So, I don't know. Um, but, yeah. But otherwise, it's it's still good. It's yes, it's, it's entertaining. Enjoyable. Yeah, so. Alrighty, part three. I'm wondering if they keep this uh, intro <coughs> through all three of these next seasons. Uh, I think they might. I mean, I don't object to the graphics, but it just seems very slow. Well, yeah. Maybe I'll speed up this particular segment in the video by, like, just a little bit. Maybe just, like, 10% and we'll see if it sounds any better. All right. Come with me if you want to live. Doctor, with the right trigger, that harmless asteroid, as you call it, could incinerate your planet and anything else in this corner of the galaxy. And what does that Rani keep right there? So, all good things come to a bend. <laughs> she have a piercing in her nose? Maybe. I noticed that in the first episode, but this is way before piercing that I remember. I mean, people did their ears, but... You know where to take her. <laughs> She's planking. <laughs> Stop! Don't take another step! Here's a turn up for the cook. A rock that talks. Turn up or turn up. Yeah. Disco lounge. Yeah. Center of leisure. He said I'd find the answer to his subservience here. From these spineless pleasure seekers. Well off. It would require effort, that's why, Doctor. Yeah. They become spoon fed drones. There's no need for them to strive, an indulgent system provides all. They're teenagers. But didn't Bears give you any clue as to what to look for? Well, couldn't we ask someone, you know? We'll be interrupting their pleasure. Did you tell me what that clue was for? I did warn you. There's none so deaf as those that clutch at straws. <laughs> you say so. You can't hang upside down for long like that. Uh. You are not a worthy opponent for the Rani. What's he crowing on about now? Ah. Oh, hologram! Why didn't she just release Mel? A bird in the hand keeps the doctor away. You're probably right. Yeah. And on this occasion, it will have the opposite effect. No more setbacks or delays. I must go back to the laboratory. That sealed chamber. I've got to get in there. Out of the frying pan into the mire. <laughs> Might have given up. To reproduce the leptonic era temperature of 10 to the power of 12K, it will be essential to create a cataclysmic explosion. Oh, it's just a brain. The equivalent of a supernova. Well being is in your hands now. Remember that. I'm doing way too much screaming. Meh.
she's making a brain. <laughs> it's probably the great intelligence. It's a, it's something. It's an episode of Billy and Mandy where the brain came alive. <laughs> so, um. So, we, I mean, we vaguely understand what she's trying to do, but is that so that she'll be able to control time? I mean, is this some idiotic plan like the Masters? Because I'm still not exactly sure what she's expected yeah. to do with it. Because the doctor said if you explode that asteroid, it's going to wipe out this entire corner of the galaxy. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Is just, just I don't know. She just needs to pool a bunch of brains together in a big brain soup to figure out this strange <laughs> matter <laughs> asteroid <laughs> on the solstice. I, I probably told you that I've actually eaten brains before. My grandmother and grandfather uh, had a farm just outside of Waco, and uh, they made calves brains into sausage and didn't tell me what they were until I had already eaten them. Mm. They were they were quite tasty. I mean it tasted just like sausage, but it was brains. Oh, yeah. This cabinet could use some shock absorbers. Mm. Uh, the vault of the man baths. Mm. made a lot of those costumes. You're all contributing gibberish. My theory will revive the formula. A fool in his formula is in party. Outrageous polemics. Gentlemen, such hostility, remember. Blessed are the pie makers, for they shall make light pastry. <laughs> it's a fundamental postulate that all motion is melody. You wouldn't say that if you met my uncle. Dismissing our position as decadent heresy is the refuge of the reactionary. Ah, well, every dogma has its day. Tell him! It is stated in the special theory and has been demonstrated that an increasing velocity putting... So it was a bad idea to put him in there. Quick, now let us stand there, help me! Are you interfering with me yet? Oh! Give her a taste of her own medicine. Shall I switch on? No, Mel, two wrongs don't make a left turn. Right. <laughs> you! Close your ankle up. Oof. They're talking about an Achilles heel. Correlated with 52 to the power of 6.4 equals 29. 39. Feet. Correction oh, dang it. is noted. <laughs> 39. Just done. Eureka! Objective achieved! Good, good job. <laughs> You snore, so shall you sleep. <laughs> yeah. By the way, Mrs. Malaprop, character in a restoration British comedy that constantly mixed up phrases like as you sow, so shall you reap, and as you snore, so, so shall you sleep. So, very bizarre, understated Malaprop there. Mm. Where there's a will, there's a... Beneficiary. Good thinking, Icon. <laughs> the delay liftoff means the rocket will miss the asteroid. Are you so Absolutely. Yeah. And this is as good as a smile. Ah, <laughs> oh, so close. Well, it's a lot of people this he's got to put back. Ladies. When I think of Bess, I shall remember with admiration the sacrifice he made. He must have been convinced that it was the only way to be certain of saving the rest of us. He'll not be forgotten. He had one good decision at the end. Well, cheerio, Icona. It's weird that you I do that with, with, this, the, with the same hand. After all the suffering she's caused... Rani has escaped to freedom in her TARDIS. 
mistress. You have taught us so much. When we return, oh, well, that's awkward. An antidote against those killer insects in the globe. The Rani always takes out an insurance policy. <gasps> You're impossible. Why did you do that? Tell her, Farun. I kind of believe that our people should meet their own challenges if they are to survive. Well, time and tide melts the snowman. Wait for <laughs> man. Who's waiting? I'm ready. You're certainly going to take a bit of getting used to. I'll grow on you, Mel. I'll grow on you. <laughs> Mel, you have no idea. He could be so much worse. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh, growing her like a fungus. Yeah. Alright. Again, uh, clever writing. The plot, not so much. The plot... Uh, and in the third and fourth episode, you could tell they were definitely padding. There's a whole lot of stuff there. This could have easily been condensed into three. With a really good editor, it could have literally been convinced, uh, condensed into two. But overall, especially the getting to know the new Doctor, I I like it. I liked it a lot. I just thought the overall plot was kind of um, plotting, to, to say the best, um, and just overly strained, to say the worst. Well, yeah. And, you know, in terms of the post-regeneration chaos that normally ensues... Um, pretty tame. Yeah. Pretty tame. Like, the last two... I mean, you had the twin dilemma where, uh, Perry was nearly choked to death. Uh, you had... What was it? Castro Valva, where he was out of it for, like, a good while, uh, before eventually getting around. Um, well, I would say that the fourth Doctor was kind of weird in Robot, but... To be honest, that's just what his character was. Yeah. It's just it was so different from the third Doctor. So, honestly, it's like, this one is, is all pretty sorted, honestly. The only thing really was, you know, not... Was mistaking the Ronnie for Mel. Yeah. But that was part of the Ronnie's plan anyway, yeah. so... Um, I at least like that with the Ronnie's big, dumb, evil plan... It still kind of works in her character because, you know, the master would just go and rule over everything. That'd be his ultimate goal. I do like that her goal, while creating a time manipulator, is to specifically, you know, guide life in the universe to a particular place. What she deems to be yeah. where it should be. She wants to bring order to the universe, you know? <laughs> So, it's, it, at least with that, it's like, you know, instead of letting nature take its course, she'll let let it take her course, basically. So, that at least still works to the, you know, the scientific understanding, uh, you know, or the scientific mind that she has. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and other than that, this is a fine episode. Yeah. So, I'm really enjoying Sylvester McCoy. Yes, definitely. Um, um, although Mel was seemed to be okay during Trial of the Time Lord, good lord, she screamed a lot in this, and I really yeah. hope she doesn't become another Susan or you know damsel in distress who does nothing but you know get captured and scream a lot. Her character seemed a bit different in this episode because when we first see her, and I and and it's all weird because you know when we first see her is in an episode that isn't technically the first time he met her, you know, because it's all in, you know, the the future story that the Doctor shows at the trial. But in that episode, she was always the go-getter. She wanted to go and discover these different things, you know, figure out what was going on on board the ship and the vervoids and everything. Whereas here, there were more instances of her being like, well, you know, why don't we get back to the TARDIS and hightail it out of there? And to me, that's more Perry than it is Mel. Yeah. So I'm curious if they've just sort of... I mean, it has to be, you know, in the in the writer's room, there has to be a sort of drastic change to, you know, like, well, 
the last guy, he's gone. You know, we're not even going to give him a proper regeneration scene. We just have a brand new Doctor, and you have to figure all of that out. So maybe that sort of sacrifices what they started setting up for Mel last season. But I don't know. I I, I hope we get back to a bit more of that, because I, I really enjoyed that about Mel uh, being that go-getter uh, compared to... Perry and Tegan, you know, so I don't know, but yeah, but I do know we got a couple comments uh, about Mel that, it, and I haven't heard any like you know anything positive or negative about Mel uh, from the fan base. All I know is she is notorious for screaming. <laughs> so, um, we are so far beyond that though. We've had so many yeah good companions that were so far beyond that that it, it it's I mean taking it literally back to nineteen sixty three and you know useless damsel in distress. And yeah. I, I, I don't understand why anybody connected thought that that would be a good idea. Yeah. And if you're going to do that, why write Mel in the way you have as a more, you know you know, action oriented, you know, trying to be a part of the plot basically. So I don't know. It, it, it's a strange thing. I don't know how much longer we have Mel. It can't be too long because we eventually are going to get Ace. And it's, I remember Ace being like the best. The Ace. Right, now, this is the 24th season? Yes. Didn't Remembrance of the Daleks start the 25th? Yes. So, he already had Ace by the 25th. So, she's going to yeah. drop out at some point during this season. Yeah. Yeah. Mel is not going to be as uh, long-lived as Tegan or Perry. So, uh, But in the meantime, I am hoping that they get back to more of how they were writing her in uh, Terror of the Vervoids. And they talked about her being a computer genius in this one, whereas before it was just that she had a fantastic memory. Yeah, so I think that was one of the things... Some Someone in the comments said that they slightly hinted at that, I think, somewhere in Terror of the Vervoids, but they just didn't expand on that. And then the next, you know, part of that was the end of the trial. So it seems like they're really trying to push that now. Uh, that, I mean, they 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 did that more than they pushed the, the sort of exercise nut that she was in that first uh, story. So, so, I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, it's, without the Ronnie, this would be a very basic story. Because, like, how many times have we seen a planet with this indigenous species and, you know, something's going wrong with this indigenous species and there's also this monstrous species that's there. You know, like, the difference is having... Uh, is having the Rani, but there have been, I, I don't know, this felt like, this felt like I've watched this episode, like, 10, maybe 20 times <laughs> in the past 23 seasons, so, uh, but otherwise it was fine, uh, the Lacertians were alright, uh, I don't know, I guess, see, they didn't really stand out, they didn't really do a ton, I suppose, but uh, otherwise they were okay. Uh, the Tetraps were interesting. I did like the the specific minion of the Rani that just really liked her and was just thinking she was going to take him to excellence in the universe. And <laughs> uh, technically, they're going to take her now to their planet. Yeah, the ending vaguely reminds me of that uh, Star Trek original series episode, The Trouble with Tribbles, where the Klingons... As they are departing the space station, Scotty teleports all of the the tribbles onto the Klingon ship, where there'll be no tribble at all. But yeah, she's she's left with the you know bloodsuckers getting all the plasma that they want back on their planet. And again, she it was never explained why she took them from their planet and brought them here to this planet sub, to subjugate the 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 indigenous people. I mean, it's like okay, <laughs> why? Yeah, yeah. is I guess it was just she needed some muscle, but she really only used the one. Yeah. So the others were just kind of trapped in the in the basement, and 
I don't know, Iraq didn't really have a problem with that, I guess, but... I don't know. Um... I find it interesting that there were also just two different, like, threats against the Lycursians, because there were the killer insects, specifically, and then the ankle bracelet that blows you up. A lot of people got blown up in this episode. I mean, it was two. But that's two more than probably needs to be. So, um... So, yeah, and then... Uh... There was also the trap that... The trap that doesn't just kill you by exploding. Like, it's not just a landmine. It's that it puts you into a sphere which bounces you around and eventually will blow up. <laughs> but it won't blow up if it hits the water, specifically. So, I don't know. I, I felt like that was a little weird. Like, maybe they just wanted to show off a special effect, basically. But... I don't know. That that was kind of strange. Um, we had the brain, and uh, eventually, eventually she figured out to use the strange matter for helium two. If helium is so great, why why don't they make helium two? Apparently, they did make helium two. So, in order to create the time manipulator, which again is still different from the master. Like, if, if the Master did it, it would be he's creating a time minute. Well, first off, he wouldn't think... He wouldn't be able to make this because he's not that smart. You know, he, like, specifically because the Ra, or the Master and the Doctor are not on the same scientific level as the Ronnie. But even if he did, you know, his plan would just be, I will, you know, I will take the universe back in time and I will rule over it. And that's it. And that, that, that'd be his entire plan. I, I at least like hers was more in character. Yeah. It is a little strange because the last time we saw her, you know, she was trying to help her people, you know, at the cost of humans basically. So, it's interesting to go from that to now. I guess that problem is solved. She also got away from that dinosaur that was in her TARDIS, as did the master. Uh and now she's just come up with this brand new completely random scheme. So, <laughs> and she needed a giant brain. With Einstein, with what would seem to be mostly people from Earth. Like, there's so many brilliant minds from Earth and the Doctor. Because she had to get a little bit of an understanding of time, basically. Yeah. So. Uh, but again, other than that, he was fine. Uh, and Sylvester McCoy is good. Yes, I, I'm looking forward to... Now, he does three seasons? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, looking forward to this. Yeah. Uh, and he's... You know... The outfit... His outfit is good. It is one of those things where it's like, I'm glad we have his you know more muted colors outfit than the last one. I will say, the one good thing I will give to Colin Baker's outfit is that he pulled it off somehow either that or it's like or my eyes like got Stockholm Syndrome and I just got used to it I don't know <laughs> but he could at least pull that outfit off yeah so um it's also interesting he had the doctor specifically had that umbrella which matches and by matches I mean it's hideous and goes with his old outfit and it's just an interesting thing of like oh the, the sixth doctor apparently just had an umbrella so now the seventh doctor can, because I remember he did have uh, just an umbrella with him. So it, it seems to me his costume is kind of a just an homage to a lot of the other doctors. You know, the frock coat from the first three, because it was it's not I didn't remember it being short, but then he had a scarf and a hat like Tom Baker did. Yeah, he had the multicolored sweater, like the multicolored jacket that that Colin Baker had. Um, well, and even and just it was kind the, of a tan overcoat like the Fifth Doctor's. Yeah, well, and even just like the vest itself does kind of remind me of uh, of the Fifth Doctor's cricket outfit. Yeah. So, so yeah, it is sort of a, a, an amalgamation, but they, at, at least they made it look good. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, one thing I did notice is that his right jacket pocket was filled to the brim with something, and I couldn't. 
he never took anything out of it, but it was just kind of like it was distracting. It was very obviously weighing his jacket down. And I was like, huh, I didn't notice. What is in there? I don't know. So um, it's probably not important, or it will be. Who knows? The doctor's pockets, they could have anything in them. So Probably a copy. I think it's School for Scandal that Mrs. Malaprop is in. It's probably a, a copy of the Restoration Comedy. <laughs> it makes me wonder if they're if he's going to keep misquoting things yeah. just for the rest well, of would be his era. Yeah, so... Um, I guess that's it. So, What's up next? Up next is Paradise Towers. Sounds okay. like a... I don't know. A, well, I guess a... Sounds like a book from the 80s, honestly. So, something that they would, like, turn into a movie. Sounds like Dune, almost. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. Nobody knows. Anywho... That is pretty much it. With all of that being said, we're Alex and Dad from 7th Hour Films, and we will see you guys next time. Take care. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. There's a bunch of links on screen if you want to go click around any of those. There's a playlist with all of our classic Doctor Who reactions, as well as another playlist for all of my modern Doctor Who reactions if you want to go check those out. Uh, there's also a subscribe button and a Patreon button on screen, as well as other links in the description if you want to go check out any of those. See you guys later.